In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the chi-squared test for independence in Python. I will be utilizing the libraries of NumPy as well as SciPy. The first example on the coding side of things is going to be a little bit more manual. And then I'm going to show you literally one line of code that automates all of that work. But before we jump into the Python code, I want to go over a little bit more background of what exactly is a chi-squared test for independence. All right, so some information on the chi-squared test for independence. So this test checks if there's an association between two categorical variables by comparing observed frequencies in something that's called a contingency table. We'll cover the contingency table in a second. Uh, your null hypothesis, two variables are independent. There's no association between them. So variable A is independent of variable B. And the alternative hypothesis is the two variables are dependent. There's an association between them. So variable A is not independent of variable B. So a few different examples, and this is going to be the example we're going to run through, at least for the slides before we jump into the code. So imagine we have a survey with data by the preferred morning drink types by gender. So we want to determine there's a relationship between gender and morning and drink preference, whether uh, someone drinks coffee or like an energy drink like Celsius, orange juice, whatever it is, right? Personally, I like drinking a Celsius early in the morning. Uh, that gets me enough energy to get going, but I can't drink a coffee. And I know my girlfriend absolutely loves coffee and can't drink a Celsius, right? So a contingency table, uh, we're gonna jump into that right now, but that is a type of table that displays the frequency of distribution of variables, helping to show the relationship between two or more categorical variables. It's useful when we look at the chi-squared test for independence, right? And uh, let's take a look at the example of the morning drink, right? So Let's say we look at coffee, Celsius, orange juice, and then we look at male or female. Uh, rows typically represent categories of one variable, columns represent categories of the second variable, right? And the cell values will show the counter frequency for each combination. So here is our example, right? Let's say we have male, female, coffee, Celsius, and orange juice. Uh, we have 200 in general. You can see coffee, right? 40 male, 80 female, Celsius, 30 male, 20 female and orange juice, 10 male and 20 female. Uh, you can see all the females add up to 120, all the males add up to 80, and then all three drinks add up to 200, all males and females add to 200. So let's take a look at how we would run this chi-squared test for independence. So first thing we wanna do is state the hypothesis in the alpha value. Um, alpha value is gonna be 0 0.05. I'm trying to keep it like that for most of these videos. Uh, and our null hypothesis, gender and beverage choices are independent, no association between gender and beverage choice. Alternative hypothesis, gender and beverage choices are not independent. There's association between gender and beverage choice, right? Uh, step two is finding those observed values. Well, we already have those observed values in our contingency table, so we're good to skip that step right over here. All right, so step three is to calculate expected values. There's a formula for that. So you take the row total times the column total, uh, and then you divide that by the grand total. So we go through all these for male and then we go all these through female. I have all these over here and you get 48, 20, 12, 72, 13, 18. Uh, sometimes you'll see these represented also as another table. I'm not gonna put another table in the presentation. Uh, instead we have these values here because we're gonna use them in again in a second. Uh, now what we wanna do is when I calculate the chi-squared statistic, O is gonna be the observed frequency and E is expected. Remember O, is what we have in this contingency table that's observed. Expected is what we just found over here, right? So we do the formula, right? So observed minus expected, square that, and then divide it by expected. We get all these values over here, and then we have to sum up all those. That's why we have the summation value, and I get 11, 11, uh, which reminds me, that was a rock song I listened to back in the day. Uh, regardless, let's keep going forward. Now we calculate our degrees of freedom, which is rows minus one times columns minus one. Um, and then it's literally two minus one times three minus one, one times two, is two. Uh, and then you find your p-value based off the information. And uh, I, I'm just gonna find the p-value by using Python, but I get 0 0.04. And uh, you can write your conclusion, right? Since the p-value uh, 0 0.04 is significantly low. And then just write your conclusion, right? So since the p-value is less than the significance level 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. There's strong evidence at the 0 0.05 significant level to conclude that gender and beverage choice 
are associated. The low p-value suggests that the observed differences in beverage choices between genders are unlikely to be due to random chance alone. So and that was a manual example of showing you uh, how we can do all this in Python. And then literally one line of code will get us uh, everything we just did here, as well as the manual example, which, which is awesome. So uh, grab your notebook and let's get started coding. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is import a few things. So import numpy as np, and then uh, import scipy.stats as stats. That's everything that we should need for this video. Also, I'm just gonna set a default alpha value, so 0 0.05. Feel free to change it if you want. That's what I'm gonna do with this video. And uh, let's go over our manual example. So example one, manual calc. And let's add in our observed values. So let's see observed equals np.array. And we're just gonna duplicate what I did in the slides, right? With the energy drinks, well not energy drinks, but the morning drinks in general. I need an energy drink right now, I'm kind of tired. But uh, what we'll pass in is 40, 30, and 10. And then uh, we'll go to the next row over here. And that was 80, 20, and 20. Hopefully these are still the same as I prep my code a little bit later after the slides. But uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, what we wanna do now is get some row and column totals. So we'll say row totals equals observed at sum axis equals one. Then we'll get our column. So column call totals equals observed dot sum axis equals zero. And then what we'll do, grand total equals observed dot sum like that, right? And then we'll just print this out over here just to make sure we get 200. Didn't make any mistakes. Perfect, that's good. So now what we wanna do is calculate our expected values. So we'll say step one, well not step one, but, um, find expected values. And the way we could do that is we expected equals np dot outer. And then we pass in row totals, call totals. And that's divided by our grand total. So grand total, which is 200. Right, that'll give us our expected values. Let's print this out. We should get like 48, 20, and 12 for that first row. 48, 20, 12, 72, 30, and 18. Now let's calculate the chi-square statistic. So let's do that. So chi-square statistic. And all we gotta do for this one over here, say chi-square equals, and we'll observed minus expected, square that, then what we're gonna do is say divided by expected, and then we just sum these up, that sum, that, and we should get 1111. So print that over here. Great, that is working over here. Now we need to calculate our degrees of freedom. So we'll say degrees of freedom, and all you do is degrees of freedom equals, and we'll have over here observed dot shape minus one times, and essentially the same thing, plus in one this time, give us our degrees of freedom, which should be two, I believe. So print out degrees of freedom two, awesome. And then we can start getting our p-value. So uh, p-value equals, and we'll say that's gonna be one minus stats, that chi-square, that CDF. Inside over here, passing chi-square, 
and then pass in our degrees of freedom and print this out. And lastly, what I do a lot of the time in these hypothesis videos, p value greater than alpha, right? The two variables are independent. Uh, there's no association between them. Else the two variables are dependent. Variables are dependent, right? There's association reject HO. And that's because we have a very small p value under here. Um, another example we'll go over a little bit later. Do the opposite, we'll have a larger p value where we fail to reject. But that is that over here. But, uh, you know, you don't really have to do all this super manual work. Let me show you a shortcut, literally one line. So we'll go to example two, which is our shortcut. And what we're going to do is check this out. So we can have chi square, right? We can have our p value. Then we can have our degrees of freedom, degrees, freedom, right? And then we can have our expected values, so expected values. And we're gonna see this is gonna be equal to stats dot chi square contingency, contingency. And then we have to pass in our observed values, which I believe that's what I called it over here. Uh, let me just double check for you guys. Yeah, so we have our observed values, right? And all you have to do is pass this in. Check this out. And what I want to do is see if I can get the same values. So let's first print out our high square value. This should be 1111. It is, right? Then let's print out our p value, which is going to be like 0 0.00038, or I think that's what it was, right? 0 0.0038. Yeah. Um, so we'll print that out. That is the same as well. Let's print out our, uh, what's next? Degrees of freedom, which we should get two. And lastly, let's print out our expected values. Oops, I'll move that over here. And check out our expected values. 48, 20, and 12, 72, 30, and 18. So yeah, um, we just have our observed values. We pass this in over here. Super, super easy. Um, let me go over another example for you guys, right? Because it's literally one line of code for this shortcut. So this time we're going to take a look at three different groups. So we'll say example, three different groups. Uh, the previous one, right? We looked at male, female. So this one, we're going to look at ages and we're going to look at, um, preferable races for someone to run and we'll make it easy. 5k marathon and ultra marathon. Um, uh, probably about the same distance from each other, right? If you think about it. 50 mile ultra marathon, 26 mile marathon, and a piece of cake. So uh, let's build this out over here. And what we'll have is observed equals np.array. Now let's imagine our age groups, we have under 30, then we have 30 to 50, and then over 50. Again, it doesn't really matter too much, but uh, I wanna show you, we can still apply this even uh, with multiple groups. So uh, let's pass in some values. So in the first one, we'll have 55, 30, 25. Then what I'll have for this next line is 35, 30, and 25. So 35, 30, and 25. And lastly, what I had on the third one is 30, 40, 30. So 30, 40, and 30. Awesome. And then all I have to do is literally the same line of code. Right, so let's grab all of our values and uh, we still have observed over here. And it ran pretty nicely. And then we can just print these out and uh, you can see our chi-squared in this one over here is 8.921. Then we can print out our p-value. Our p-value is 0 0.06, right? And next we're gonna print out our degrees of freedom is four. And lastly, let's do our expected values. And then you can see those expected values. And, uh, you know, we could pass in our if else statement again over here. Um, we can have the variables are independence. There's no association between them. Fail to reject HO. So it doesn't matter what the age, uh, there's no preference in the race.
look probably is in real life, but these are just numbers I generated for this tutorial. I wanted to make sure I had a p-value above 0 0.05, uh, so that way I'd be able to reject and change it up a little bit with these three groups. But yeah, literally uh, SciPy, one line of code. Otherwise, I mean, it's not too hard to calculate this if you're, you have to do this manually and outline the steps, both the slides as well as over here. But remember, start with the observed, right? Find your expected values. And you can get your chi-square pretty easy. Observed minus expected, square it. Y by expected, sum those up. And yeah, that's uh, essentially it for this tutorial. Well, that's it for the chi-square test for independence video. And if you learned something new, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're uploading at least three different data science focused videos every single week. And if you want to learn even more about statistics, I have a few videos linked down below in the description and a playlist right over here that you can click on right now.